Hi everyone and welcome to the third part of the series where I uh, create a dynamic dashboard using Netcool Omnibus. This is the last video where I will be using Omnibus 7.4. In the next video I will be using Omnibus 7.3.1 with the uh, Impact to do the same dashboard using Impact Operator View. If you haven't seen the first two videos, I recommend that you start there first, since much of the material I will be covering in this video is already explained in part one and part two. In the last video, we connected the dashboard to the object server's HTTP interface, and we used a small JavaScript to update the dashboard items. And no matter how small the script is, I still managed to implement a bug, so I will start this video by fixing that. The code in the download link is correct, because that was a lot easier to change than uh, the already uploaded video. So, if we look in the JavaScript uh, dashboard.js, uh, I explained that since the data is ordered in the response from the object server, I could just compare the previous data item with the current one, and if they have the same node or city, I just keep, kept on adding tallies until the uh, previous and current city is no longer the same. In that case, the city is ready, and I print the item to the screen. Well, uh, it worked good until the last city in the response. When we get to the last node, uh, let's say uh, Washington hits the loop, uh, it aggregates tally like it should, but uh, when we get to the absolute end, uh, the last record in the response, the previous city will be Washington, and also the current record will have Washington, so nothing will be printed to the screen. To fix this, we just need another append to the dashboard items container, just right after the loop ends. This append will print what's currently in the cache, so it will contain the last record we missed earlier. So, the end of the loop, jQuery dollar sign, target dashboard items and append, list item, heading 3, previous city, that's now in the cache, and uh, end heading 3, start heading 2, total tally, span, space events end span and heading two and list item let's try this yeah now it's working uh, let me just clear all the events so we can verify with the event list so all the citizen event list is printed and the total tally is correct as promised in the last video, I will now add severity colors to the boxes, and this is actually very simple. Uh, just to explain how it works, I will go into my index.html file and commit out the dashboard.js script, so we can work with the sam sample data until we get uh, the colors under control. In the head section, comment out or cut it out, whatever you feel is simplest, the dashboard.js script. And we refresh the web browser and uh, there we have our sample boxes again. For the colors, I will assign a new CSS class to each severity. I will call the classes severity0 to severity5. The only thing these classes do is changing the background image in the boxes to a nice gradient between two colors. The classes will then be added to the appropriate list item to make the box change its color. Uh, it's probably a lot e easier if I show you. Uh, in the index.html file, I go down to the sample data. I can, for example, say that the first list item, Tokyo, should be of class severity 5. When we refresh the page, this box will be red. We just need to add the CSS for the severity class. Up in the style section, under dashboard items list before section, add a new one. Target, dashboard items, the list item, and then a dot for the class, and class name severity5. I then write the line to change the severity color, and this line is for WebKit browsers like Safari or Google Chrome, and since the gradient feature is not supported by older browsers, 
I will add a default color at the top. And that's just if an older browser would connect to this page and uh, it doesn't support uh, gradient, at least it will show a red box. In the code I put up for download, I've expanded this section so that every browser is supported. Uh, but it just gets too messy to have it all in the video, so if, you, if you're working with older browsers, have a look in the download file. On this line, the first color I specify is the color that will be in the top of the box, and the second one will be on the bottom. This will create a nice gradient, and uh, you can just change the color codes here later if you want some other freaky color in the boxes. Let's try this in the web browser. So, Tokyo is red now. Uh, let's get back to the code and add severity 4, 3 and 2 for the other boxes. Sydney, list item class, severity 4. Berlin, list item class, severity 3. London, list item class, severity 2. And that should be enough for our test. Up to the style section, I will copy uh, severity 5 and paste it in 5 times. Uh, this will give me all the severity from 0 to 5. And the only thing I need to do now is I need to change the colors in each class. So for severity 0 it's green, severity 1 purple, severity 2 blue, severity 3 yellow, severity 4 orange, Severity 5, that's the one we already fixed, so i leave that one. Save and refresh the browser. And that looks pretty good. So the classes for the list items are defined now, so the only thing we need to do is to extract the highest severity from the response from the object server and add the class in the append section of the script. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. I open the dashboard.js script and uh, before the Ajax call I will define a new variable to hold the highest severity color. I'll call it high sev and set it to default zero and I'm just verifying the data section we request the severity so that should be available for us in the loop and let's have a look here the only time I need to check if we got the high severity for the city is at the same time as we aggregate the tally if previous city and the current city are not the same there's no reason for us to check for a higher severity, so just after we aggregate the tally, I write if high sev is smaller than event row dot severity. So if the previous severity was smaller than the current severity, then high severity should be set to the current severity. And for the other cases, if city is empty and if previous city doesn't match the current city, we just reset the high sev to the current severity value. We now need to get the severity class into the append section, so i uh, adding the class to the list item equals severity, and then I add the number from high sev. So if high sev was 4, this will print out list item class equals severity 4 and change to the gradient we set in the style section. I do the same after the loop so I don't miss it this time. Done. And uh, to enable this we need to go into the index.html file again and remove the comments and save. And we go to the web browser and refresh. And that's it. Let's remove all the events. They are populating. Colors look okay. Oh, I'm just going to try to change some severity of the events, see if that works. Yep, it's working. As I mentioned, uh, when I put this code up for download, I will add support for all the browsers. Um, if you're using uh, Internet Explorer 9 or earlier, you are a bit out of luck since the gradient is not supported in that browser, but you will still have the default color uh, without the gradient. So the dashboard is ready. Uh, really quickly now I will uh, move this dashboard to an external web server. So we will only use the object server as a resource. All the code will be from an external web server. I've installed Apache web server locally on the PC to try this out. 
in my document root I have a directory called dashboard just as on the object server. Uh, connect to the object server and copy all the files we got in our dashboard directory. And then I go to a browser and the address is now http localhost slash dashboard. And uh, that doesn't seem to work so we have to look in the console. Hmm, so the paths to the scripts are wrong, but that's pretty easily fixed. I'm gonna open my index.html file and just remove uh, dashboard from the path. Save, refresh. This time the JavaScripts are running like they should, but we don't get any data. If I look in the console, I see that we get an error about access control allow origin and we will get stuck here. There is a couple of ways for us to fix this, but we need to have access to the web server configuration on the object server. And since that one is bundled in the object server, we can't really change anything. Hopefully in uh, upcoming releases there will be a property that lets us use JavaScript calls from other domains. It's nothing wrong with the object server's uh, HTTP server implementation. Most web servers work like this, but often you can modify uh, the server to send different headers back to the browser so we don't get this problem. Maybe a fix pack will add this feature in the future. But we don't need to cry over that, because uh, this can be fixed. Uh, take a look at this. In our first setup we had everything in the same domain, Omni 74, that's my object server. Since we were in the same domain, JavaScript could ask for resources. Then we moved our JavaScript to a different domain and everything stopped working. And that's because our JavaScript domain was now localhost and the data we requested was in another domain, Omni74. And this is the restriction in the browser, so we can't work around it. But if the JavaScript wants to talk with its own domain, we can just let it do that. In my localhost domain, I will create a small PHP script that will be a relay for all the requests it gets. Since the PHP script is in the same domain as the JavaScript, everyone will be happy. As far as the browser knows, the data came from the same domain. Uh, I have the proxy uh, active on my server, so let's test this. In my dashboard.js script, the only thing I need to change is uh, the Ajax URL. I'm just going to add the URL to my proxy script in front of the object server URL. So HTTP localhost PHP JSON proxy index.php and as a parameter to this script question mark and I send it a URL and the contents of this URL is the original URL we've been requesting before. Let's try it. See, problem solved. Uh, let's try the event list and delete all the events. Yes, everything is working like before. Uh, it would be really mean if I ended the video here before I show the PHP proxy, so let's take a quick look at that. I placed the script in the PHP JSON proxy folder in my local server doc root and I named it index.php. The first the PHP script does is that it loops through all the parameters it got in the request, like the URL we set in the JavaScript and the parameters in the data section, like filter to use and uh, columns to return, etc. When all these are sorted out, we do a curl call. In the get data section, you need to specify the object server username and password you want to connect as. As you can see, I'm using the root user. Uh, I would uh, recommend that you change this to something else in the production environment. You might even want to look at some kind of SSL encryption for this. Uh, it's up to you. Just make sure that you have a user in the object server with at least alerts user role assigned. Then we're using a curl to connect and retrieve the data in JSON format. When ready, we print out the data, also in JSON format, and this is what the JavaScript will receive as a response to the AJAX call. And that's just like before when we were on the object server. It's a very simple script that you can extend if you need more functionality. 
so that was the event dashboard in Omnibus 7.4 using the new HTTP interface. I hope you found these three videos interesting. If you have time, I would love to hear your feedback. In the next video I will uh, use Omnibus 731 that doesn't have the HTTP interface and the impact to show how the same dashboard could be created. Uh, instead of JavaScript and Ajax, we will be using Impact's operator views. It is of course still JavaScript and Ajax in the background, but there will be a lot less coding for us since Impact has it all hidden behind the scenes. As usual, all the code I had on screen can be downloaded with the links in the description. Until next time, good luck with the code and goodbye.